So at the end of our last video, we said that complex numbers were very good at describing things in two-dimensional space, and I mentioned that they were going to be particularly useful for dealing with rotation in two-dimensional space. After that, we took a look at this little applet, and hopefully you've had a play, and you've noticed that as you raise i to powers, we get rotation in this two-dimensional space. So let's explore what happens when we raise i to these different powers a little bit further. So first of all, we have i to the power of 1, which is just i, right? That's equal to i. All right, so far, so good. All right, what about i squared? Well, that's equal to i times i, right? That's what squared means, multiplying something by itself. Now, what's i again? Well, our definition is the square root of negative 1. All right, so the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3, right? Because that's sort of the definition of a square root, the number when multiplied by itself. Okay, so the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1. So we have i and we have negative 1. Okay, what about i cubed? Well, that's equal to i times i times i. Three of those. Okay, well, we know what i times i is already. We just figured that out. i times i is equal to this times this, which is negative 1. And then we have negative 1 times i. Negative 1 times anything is equal to the negative of that something. So negative 1 times i is negative i. Easy? Let's do this one. i to the 4 is equal to i times i times i times i. And i times i, we've already established, is equal to negative 1. And so we have one there, we have one there. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. 1. All right, so we have i, negative 1, negative i, and 1. I'm just going to get rid of all this and summarize. All right, so that's easy. i, negative 1, negative i, and 1. And on our argand diagram, we're looking at i, we're looking at negative 1, we're looking at negative i, we're looking at 1. We get this rotation from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. What about i to the 5? Well, that's easy. That's equal to i times i times i times i times i, 5 times. Let's make it simple. i to the 4 times i. Why am I saying i to the 4? Why is it, how does that make it simple? Because i to the 4 is 1. So we end up with 1 times i, which is just i. Okay, I don't have to do i to the 6, i to the 7, i to the 8. You can do all them yourself. But we're going to have something really neat here. I to the 5, 6, 7, and 8 are equal to I to the 1, 2, 3, and 4. I, I, negative 1, negative 1, negative I, negative I, and 1, and 1. And funnily enough, this works as well for I to the 9, 10, 11, and 12. I, negative 1, negative I, and 1. All right, so they happen in groups of 4. All right, so how would we do questions that look like this? Simplifying I to the 37. Well, it comes down to knowing your four times tables. So i to the 37 is the same as i to the 36 plus 1. Now, why have I chosen 36? Because 36 is a multiple of 4. Let's make that super explicit. i to the 4 times 9 plus 1. Okay. Now, our index laws say that if we've got uh, something to the power plus another thing, we can separate that out. And we can say that that's equal to i to the 4 times 9 times i to the 1, which is just i. i to the 1. Let's call it i to the 1. Okay. Why, why, have I, why am I talking about multiples of 4? Multiples of 4, right? Anything raised to a multiple of 4 is equal to 1. So this part that I've broken off, this i to the 4 times 9, that's equal to 1 times, and then this i to the 1 here is equal to i. So 1 times i is i. So simplifying, i to the 37 is equal to i. Now, another example, i to the 27. Again, think of your 4 times tables. We've got i to the 
go with the multiple one less than 27, right? So uh, I to the 24 plus 3. Okay. Now, that is the same as I to the, the 4 times 6 plus 3. Right? I'm just making that explicit here that this is a multiple of 4. Okay. Now, this is the same as I to the 4 times 6 times I to the 3. Now, I to the 4 times 6 is 1. Always 1. That's 1. And then I to the 3, these are the only things we need to know. I to the 3 is equal to negative I. So this is negative I. I to the 27 is negative I. I to the 37 is I. One more example. So this one's I to the 34. And this time I'm going to do it in a speedier version. I'm not going to do it as many lines of working. So I to the 34, that's equal to I to the 32 uh, times I to the 2. I to the 34 is equal to I to the 32 times I to the 2. Now, I to the 32, because 32 is a multiple of 4, that's equal to 1. And I squared is equal to negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. All right, so I had five lines of working here. We've brought it down to three lines of working here. This feels like a good amount. So this is what I should be looking at when we're doing this kind of work.